have a business idea and you want to start your business. But how do you go from idea to reality? Discover how you can do so in this video. I always say this whenever we are doing something like this with um, startups or do, like incubation groups that we usually will visit. <laughs> People usually will say that all you need is an idea. Money is not the issue. Please disregard that statement <laughs> from today because money is very, very important to have. Money is very, very important to have in starting a business. Of course, start with the idea. But don't limit it to the idea. Start with the idea and move on quickly to raise capital. One of the biggest challenge we have in this country is raising capital. Biggest challenge in this country is raising capital and the state supporting its own people. It is a big issue in this country. I've been to other countries where they will tell you as long as you're an indigenous, the government deliberately makes sure that they will find a way to support you against a foreigner. But in Ghana, it's the opposite. Now, so one of the biggest challenge for startups is raising capital. And I'm sure you heard about it several times. It is one, it's, it's one of the biggest challenge for many businesses. Bank rates is another thing. You might get a loan from the bank, but as, just assume that you are paying 25%, 27, 30% interest rate on a, a 100,000 you raise to start something. It means that you are paying 30,000 30, or more to this, the bank. And the bank has taken and your, even including your birth set, they are taking you your mother's birth set, everything. And I'm, sometimes I ask myself, what is the risk that the bank is facing? But you know, the problem is when you live in a dishonest market, that's the challenge you face. Because our market actually is also a very porous market. It's, it's quite dishonest. So the banks are afraid. The next thing that is a, is a challenge to most startups and to us, because when we started, the problem we had was money. I'll give an example of starting it in, starting Tupperware. Now, one of the things that we faced when we started Tupperware was raising money. Of course, you have your money. You have money you want to, uh, but then you need quite huge, hundreds of thousands of dollars to start. And the uh, company is asking you, do you have this capital? And you say, okay, yes. And you come back to the country. I remember we, 2017, when we came back and we we're going to start Tupperware, I wrote, I wrote a, a short proposal, two, page or one, two pages to friends that I knew who come up with some money. And we we're just asking for $10,000 each from 10 people to make 100,000 to add to ours and then use it to start. I went around everywhere, nobody gave. <laughs> Everybody said, okay, it looks it's a good idea. But Ghana, hey, even pa, Ghana has a what on your man's ever ton. I'm over ton the plastic. Now plastic we are sure say be mokola or confronto. That's what people said. I mean, Sally, but you know, if I give you this money to get locked up, <laughs> and you might not be able to pay because you are my friend, I can't come and uh, just you and collect the money. Raising capital is big. So I ended up, well, how did it happen? My father gave me $10,000. My mom gave me equivalent of $10,000. Then we added our money, took some investment money out. Those times, men's gold. I had investments there. <laughs> Went for the men's gold money. <laughs> and then we started. And today, if you are turning over tens of millions of Ghana cities in a year, people will not understand. But it started from hundreds of thousands uh, in, in USD borrowed and paying um and a friend an another friend also gave us two thousand dollars and said okay i mean i know one of the principles we have um uh, and my friends we do have is that don't loan to friends and family <laughs> so i understood when they were not going to give me the loan i knew that clearly the policy we have all been sharing which is do not give loan to friends and family especially if you have never given them a loan before <laughs> so you either give them something you know you cannot collect back, or in case they will not pay back at all, you have nothing to lose. As I knew that some of them definitely will not give us the funding. But you see, 
Your best way of raising capital is from family. <laughs> That's the best way of raising capital. If you don't have family who believe in you, then your business will hang. In the same way, if your family are not the first to buy from you, family business, family must buy from you first. Every business we started, I make sure my parents would buy first. And I tell them it's a seed you are sowing into my business. Then we move on to our uncles. I remember I went to Kumasi with Steph to one of my uncles. I said, well, we started a new business. I, I want a loan, but I can't come for a loan. So take my product, buy my product so that you can, be, you can get me to meet my targets. And that is how we get family to join us in doing the business. In Ghana, it's difficult to get your family members to actually patronize your business. Very difficult. But if you have good family, like some of us have enjoyed, you can get them to buy. And the other thing I teach even my temporary consultant to do is sympathy. Use what? Empathy. I will cry on you. It's difficult for me to cry, but I'll sob on some of the uncles and aunties and say, you know, if you don't buy, <laughs> tomorrow my children will not have food. <laughs> and they say, you, you don't need money. I say, oh, I need oh. It's not everything that I can come and tell you. And automatically they'll buy. They don't need it, but they buy. You know, <laughs> so if you are starting a business, please. I mean, when we started SQ, my uncle in Kumasi, um, Madonna Health Services, um, Dr. Dr. and Dr. And Mrs. Uh, Robert and Mary Sego, they were the biggest supporters of our business. Why? I went to me and said, I do accounting services. And uncle, I don't have clients, good, lot of clients. So please, why don't I consult for your hospital and then you pay me? And he said, okay, are you sure you can do this? I said, yes. And then they gave us the trust to handle that. And for five years, we did that, and that brought us capital. So the same way in raising capital, you need to offer your service. When we started in SKU, for instance, I did provide service for one year for free to a lot of people just to build the capital. Capital is not just money. It's also trust. Uh, number two, challenge. So I'm trying to deal with the challenge and then the solution so that we don't spend so much time. Um, number two, one of the things that also is a big challenge is the right documentation, registration, agreements, and or contracts, especially if it's a limited liability company. Now, I have witnessed myself. I remember one of our very first companies, 20, 2008, I did with some friends. Um, I was then at Carrie Baptist Church. I called four friends together, so five of us, and then we shared. We shared the shares 20% 20, 20 each and then registered a company. They asked me where the company is now, it's dead. Less than one year, disagreement, everybody's disagreeing. Uh, no, 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 only two of us were doing, myself and <laughs> Pfizer. The others were not contributing anything to the business. I said, no, no, this is a waste of time. Ah, one day when it becomes big, all these people come and enjoy. We stopped, at, we left the company somewhere. It's hanging now. So. You need to have the right documentation. Look, if you don't know it, ask a lawyer. Because until you enter court for business reasons, then you understand that there are so many friends that have become bitter enemies because of business. So from that day, my lesson learned was that I will never share with you without a shareholders agreement. If you are going to take part of my share, I will give you a shareholders agreement to sign before the registration. And if you're going to be part of my board, I'll give you a board mandate, which now we advise all our clients to do. So that when you have signed that and you are part of the business, then now, when I want to collect my shares because you are not doing what you are supposed to do, I have a legal basis to do it. One of our businesses that we had to split up um, just after one and a half years, it was the same because everybody signed, including even spousal ag uh, agreement attached to it. And, and some of these I sought advice also from Susie during those times to get a draft of the shareholders agreement to use. And immediately the people decided to leave. I asked them, bring your agreement. You see what has been written there. If you decide to do X, Y, Z, you forfeit. Everybody transfer back. 
this is a transfer agreement, transfer back your shares to me, back to the center. And they did, and we are still friends. So agreements actually foster good relationship when the business is about to die or it's about to break up. If you don't have agreement, you are sure that your friends, good friends for years will become your enemies because of business. So documentation is very important. Get the business registered. And immediately you start sharing ideas. Look, if you have an idea and you share with your wife, even if you don't put your name, her name on the business, she has a share. So better know it. If you go and use your friends and then put, of course, it's not all businesses you might have your spouse name on. But remember that your share, if you are no longer existing, it will move on to your spouse, whether you put her name there or not. So better put agreement before the country gives you a will for that. Um, immediately you have an idea, put it on paper. Whoever you are involving in the discussion, make sure that they sign something before, an NDA or something before you share the idea with them. If they pick it up to register it, then um, you can hold them on. And if you get an idea, please go and register it. I, every idea I get, I go and just register it, it as a name at the registrar and just keep it as a sole thing or a registered name. And then nobody can use that name in future. Seek right advice. I've mentioned that already. I mean, Susie is there. She can help. Uh, it's not for free anyway. Maybe in the first one, she'll do it for free. But I remember there was one incident I had something to do for a client. And then Susie referred us to um, something, something of uh, Joy FM. <laughs> when he gave me the charge, I said to the client, this is the person, and this is what the person is saying. But at first, even before he sits to talk, this is the amount. And I realized that, okay, when you, you go to Susie and Susie gives you advice, and you take it as if oh, it's normal uh, as a friend, you see that when you enter into sitting before the lawyer, you see it's not free. The same thing when I started Tupperware. I knew all the questions that they will ask. Legal questions, but legal and compliance came to Ghana. He said, no, we are coming to Ghana. Show us, go to a lawyer, find a lawyer, and we want to ask the lawyer all the questions that you say you have answers to and you've answered. But we want an independent legal person to answer the questions. And can you believe, because a foreigner was involved sitting in front with this um, <laughs> lawyers, every hour was like $2,000. So sometimes your friends will give you advice and you take it, oh, it's normal. Charlie, one day they can lay claim because if I give you advice and you didn't pay, you must give me something, you know? So we must value the advice they give us um, often. The other thing that you need also, a, a, a challenge that we face here is um, government support. Not many governments, um, there are several of them that I realized are there. I've seen them. Some of them I tried. But I'm telling you, so we have SDF, Skills Development Fund, in Ghana here, which you can seek advice and support from. They don't give you cash. I've done that for a client before, um, Heal the World. They don't give you cash, but then when you apply, they will give you skills development. So they'll send all the technical goods come and train, whether you have capping tests, you have um, cobblers, which is shoemakers. They'll come and train them, give them the skill, and that is it. So they might give you a grant of 100,000, and you think, oh, you are going to get 100,000 CD cash. No. They will get a consultant and rather pay the money to the consultant, and the consultant will come and train you <laughs> in your company. That's what SDF does mean. Um, they are there. Um, they can also help you. They have a fund. In the COVID time, they were providing some fund. I went to their place to go and apply. When I went through the process, I realized that no, this is more political than I thought. So I filled the form. They followed up several times. I realized that when they followed up, the things I'm supposed to do, there are some people you need to sort out. And I said, no, I won't sort out. So hey, my name is still hanging there because there were people who were seeking for that. Then we have the national, uh, the NEIP, National Entrepreneurship and Innovate, Innovation Program, which is a recent one they started under the Ministry of Finance. Um, quite innovative. It's also a long process. So they did the presidential pitch, I think last two years, just before the elections. And some people got funding. I mean, real cash. But some of these things sometimes are political. So 
uh, sometimes you don't want to uh, also meddle in politics with your business, then you stay out. But I won't, I won't say if you start something, start a business, you can approach them and they'll help you. The next problem we have in this country for startups, and this one for all businesses, is staffing issues. Human capital is a big challenge. Number one, getting them to even recruit is a problem. There are so many people roaming and saying they don't have jobs, but recruiting them becomes a problem. The biggest challenge in this for startups is people are walking around who don't have experience and yet they want you to pay them certain money. That makes no sense. I mean, I just last week, I interviewed someone, we needed an accountant. We still do need anyway. I need like two accounts people. And uh, this guy has not, he just finished national service. He's still on contract with one of these government agencies. Has only worked on one schedule before in accounting. And yet wants to be paid like 2,000. And I said, I, do you understand what it means to be paid 2,000 CDs? When you don't know anything and I have to train you for the next one year to become equipped. And said, yes, still, that is the amount I want. I said, oh, then you don't have a job. You see, so that is the kind of uh, field we have. And sometimes you might employ them and they will be very sweet in the interview. But when they are delivering, it's a problem. I mean, we've had, there have been instances where, and then sometimes when you pick them and you have trained them, sometimes you have even funded them, then they can abruptly decide to leave without notice. I've had that, we've had that experience too. We had that experience one time where all staff left uh, wholesale. So they just decided one day not to tell me uh, one department, pack all their laptops, lock it in the safe, leave the key, leave the key at the door, and left. The next day, nobody came back to work. So my secretary was asking them, "Ah, why are you leaving your key?" He said, "Oh no, we are going somewhere. We back." You know, it's it's quite it's it, it's painful. I mean, that that particular season was very bad for me because then that time was the, we call it accounting, we call it the cocoa season of accountants from January to April. So when March, you are, you are running accounts for clients and then all your account staff decide to pack their tools down and leave without informing you. When some of them, you have funded their education. That's how it becomes. Because was, people will tell you, and, and the problem about staffing also is that most of the time people tell you you don't appreciate them and I, you need to understand how, you see, appreciation, so in dealing with staffing, appreciation is very subjective. So when you pick staff, I think one of the things I have learned is that ask them, what do you mean by appreciation? <laughs> and then try to see whether you can fulfill that appreciation. Some might not be money. Some might have their own mindset of what they mean by that. And then when you are able to understand it, you might be able to sustain and retain. If not, you end up training. We have ended up doing that over and over and over. Like a friend of mine will say, hire and fire till you get the right ones. That's one thing that you have to do. There are other agencies you can take advantage of, like NAPCO. NAPCO, for instance, has given us some good stuff also, uh, because it's a government program that was started. Yeah, it's a free, it's free, free stuff. So you take them, they don't know much, you groom them, some will stay, some will leave. At a point, we had to send all 10 NAPCO trainees we had and let them pack their tools and leave because then they come to office and they are just filing nails. And I said, well, this is not the government agency. You can't be here and be filing your nails. This one, if you don't work me, I will fire you. And I will not look at you whether you are a relative or something. And I'm not going to say because you belong to a particular political party or not. Hey, you are going. So we have to send them all and send a letter to NAPCO and say, we don't need these people, bring us new people. So you can take advantage of that. If you are starting new, you can take advantage of national service. The national service uh, remuneration is I think 550. So um, you, can, you can take advantage, use them to start. When you are starting, you don't have much money to pay staff. So you can use all these agencies to provide you the human resource and then you move on. So let's move on. 
And what opportunities are out there to help businesses surmount these challenges? Okay, I think I've mentioned as I was going along, what are the qualities an entrepreneur needs to succeed, especially in Ghana? This is something I've addressed in my book, Start. Hopefully it will be published very soon. You need to be honest. One of the things that a lot of clients have said to me in business, Ghana, outside Ghana, is we are not honest. And I've come to understand it. I mean, one of the days I was in Malaysia and they mentioned the same thing to me. They said, your people most of the time are not honest. You can start business with them and within a short time, you can see they are dishonest. It's a big problem when foreigners come to the country. Even with our own Ghanaians, we are not honest with them. So if you want to be an entrepreneur that will have a business that will last beyond four generations, you must be honest and you must be open. Look, if I'm going to charge you 20,000, I'll tell you that I'm going to charge you 20,000. I'm not going to say that, I'm not going to hide it in something. And most of the time, that's one of the things. We hide all our prices, our charges in something, and then you end up losing the clients. For us, we'll tell you, this is the charge. This is what, if you can't afford it, tell us, then we'll try and reduce. At the same time, when you are entrusted, clients entrust you with their life, with their business. You don't pass their back and do things against them. If you're honest with the product supply, then they stay with you. If you are dishonest, they leave you. And so um, the, 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 the quality that you, one of the main qualities you need, and as a Christian, you must be honest. The system we live in is very dishonest. Even our laws are dishonest. I remember in the Bible school, um, I think I can see Pastor, one of my mates here. I saw him. Hey, now we have a lot of people on the call. Mm. <laughs> um, I think I saw Reverend Chimensa. I'm a Yes, Reverend Chimensa, yes. I was my mate in the MA class. And uh, I used to say this. Our law is our laws for business actually is very dishonest. Um, let me be very frank. Our laws in this country, because if in a country where before you make one CD, the taxman tells you to pay him more than what you are you have not even made, automatically makes a businessman dishonest to the state. It actually makes you dishonest to the state because then you've not even made one city and the government tells you pay a stamp duty of so so and so amount on your stated capital. And you can't state zero capital. But somewhere like South Africa, I was registering a company and I could start with zero capital <laughs> and then later build up the capital. So I don't know the psyche behind most of our corporate laws. It makes people steal. It makes people be dishonest automatically because they have to hide things to be remain profitable. One of the few businesses I've been part of that are very honest is Tupperware. Because the first thing they gave us to sign is anti-corruption agreement. And they said, if you don't know any pay bribe, you lose the license. If we hear that you have paid a bribe at the port to clear your product, you lose the license. If we hear that you have under declared the invoice at the port, you lose your license. And that was very strange to me. I have to be honest as a Christian, it was very strange because then for a company to tell me that I can still remain profitable, even though I don't under declare at the port, which most people do because the taxes at the port is so loaded that you pay, for instance, in Tapa, we pay more than 49% of your invoice value is tax and levies. Now, tell me how much. So if your prices are like twice, that's how come most companies in Ghana are doing 400% margin on their cost price. And people don't understand because the system makes you dishonest. Now, you must also be trustworthy. I think I mentioned it in that one. Be trustworthy with other people's resources. People give you money. Like one of the businesses we started, we have a... Uh, someone who gave us money as part of it. Every time you must tell the person, this is how far the business is going. Because, and that is the thing that people in Ghana don't do. 
you get someone's money to do the business and you don't report to the person. No, it's my business. No, you have to be trusted with the resource. They might have given you a car to do your business. Report to them. It could be a family member. They don't even want anything from you. They don't want any return from you, but report to them and let them know how it is progressing. Number four, you must be many things at different times or stages of your business. That's one of the qualities you have to have. You must be the cleaner when you start. You must be the accountant. You must be the, uh, the purchasing officer. And then as you grow, you now give the, give the responsibility to other skilled people to handle. And then be a friend to the statutory bodies. This one is very critical. You must be a friend to the statutory bodies. It is one thing that if you don't do, you will pay for it. In other countries, you don't need to be a friend to them because if you do that, they rather will become um, like the way they will look at you will be another thing. But in Ghana, when you don't, <laughs> if you are not friends to them, they come at you like you are the one, you are the sinner. But you are not the sinner. They are, they are rather, excuse me to say, <laughs> are the ones who are at fault. But you have to befriend them. And then also, in not just befriending them, when you befriend them and free with them, you learn also to be able, they teach you what to do. So I've had a tax officer. And unfortunately, this woman was not a Christian. The Christians have dealt with rather come and extract from you. This, was not, this person was not a Christian. And she called me and said, hey Ben, the way you presented your accounts, every day government will take a lot of money from you. So come, let me show you something. Do this, do that, do that. It's all in the law. If you don't take advantage of it, you think that, oh, you're doing something wrong. No, this is the portion of the law you can follow. So position the account this way and you avoid all these taxes. And I said, oh, thank you. And I said, oh, what is my charge? He said, oh, I... You, you were fine with us and free with us. So I, since you were not like proving that you know too much, I also thought that I should share this with you. And from that point, she has become a friend to us. I remember trying to even offer her something the day they came to our office. She said, no, Eben, don't. And I said, wow, this is the first time dealing with tax officers for 20 years. This is the first time one would tell me, don't. When I finish and you want to touch me with anything, fine. But until I am done with my job, don't. And they were traveling all the way from, from Agogoloshi to Spinktest and still said, don't give me TNT. So, you know, when you are friends with them and they realize that you are not fighting them, sometimes they just open up and tell you that, look, this is how to go about it. Not only the tax office, even the registrar general's department, even the local assemblies. Because you need all of them to do your business well. For your business operating permit, you need the local assemblies. If you don't befriend them or use agencies that can help you. So in the case where you don't have, um, uh, you, you don't have the, the skill, use agencies. Okay, I promise that before um, we round up, I also want to state that um, um, for those who didn't join uh, or didn't make it at the beginning, you can get the recording. Um, it would be posted on the YouTube channel, floodlightdaily.com. Uh, and also, Eben and Steph are also tax consultants. They are accounting, accountants. Um, they also support in company registration, among other things. So if you need support in any of these things, in terms of registration, in terms of tax consultants, we'll put their, their contacts in the messages um, and you can reach them. They can support you in terms of starting, registering, you know, running your books. I mean, so that you don't um, get to be, you know, for the taxman to find you like the. <laughs> you know, no, so that uh, at least uh, we know right from the start the taxman will find you. So I think this would be my last. We appreciate all of you joining. Um, this would be my last statement. Uh, Susie, you can have your. All right. Jesse, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Steph and Aben. It's been wonderful having you with us on this call. And thank you so much for all of you who have stayed through this two-hour period.
with us. My takeaway definitely has been on the the attitude or the virtues that an entrepreneur should have in Ghana, especially that you should be honest, all right, and that you should report yourself, you know, regularly to those who have given you funds to do the work that you're doing. As Emmanuel said, my co-host and my husband, we would be loading this interview onto our YouTube channel for Floodlights Daily. We'll do a bit of editing and then we'll load it on in a couple of days and we'll share it on the various platforms where you saw this message so you can access it. And we'll put the links to their, their companies, Q and Ren and Ren. We'll put the links to their companies in the description section of the, of the video when it's uploaded so you can just access it from there. So we'd be so grateful. This has been brought to you by floodlightsdaily.com, your faith and family blog. I've been on this webinar with my co-host and my wonderful husband, Mr. Emmanuel Akutu, who did most of the talking today, interestingly. And... Let us for the men, it's okay. Yes, yes, we did, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and we have been with Ebenezer mm -hmm. and Stephanie Sego, our very good friends. And um, until Thank next you. time, stay blessed and God be with you. All right. Thank you very much. You. Thank you very much. And thank you all for joining. We see all of you, Auntie Pat, um, Beatrice, Mary, Florence, um, Mami Adwa. We see and some we see all our Tupperware people too. Uh -huh. yes, thank you, Tapawe. Thank you, Tapawe. Thank, <laughs> thank you for coming. Yeah. Yes. Yes, uh, Cecilia, we see you. We've been crying a long time. Mr. have coffee. Yes, and my mom is here as well. Uh, yes. Mama, thank you for joining. Madam Mata Aje and Mr. William Aje, mm -hmm. we, we see you. Thank you very much. Jad, Malike, we see you. Good evening, please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Prisoner. Ima, Ima, uh, this um, Mrs. Yeah. Tando was on, Pastor Texman's wife. Oh, I see. Yeah, yes, she was I, I saw it, Tando. Is it, I think it's Josephine or no, Florence. Florence. Florence okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. We, we see all of you. Thank <laughs> Michael, David, um, Cynthia, Christy, all of you. We say thank you thank very you. much. Yes. <laughs> But Amma, <laughs> we see all of you. God willing, we'll meet. Uh, Mr. Evangelist, Danso, we see you. Yes. Jesse, long time. Yeah. Now, thanks for coming and staying. Sally, good evening. Yeah. Rosalind. Yeah. Gloria, it's good to have all of you. We, we so Thank much you appreciate all for coming. Yes. Teddy, is it uh, Babs? Good evening. All right. Vera. We see all of you. Thank you so, so much. Yes, all right. Evans, thank you so much for staying with us. God bless you all. We'll not be here if you were not here. Yes, thanks, thank thanks, you for thanks for spending staying. your time here. Yeah. All right. Thank Maria. you too. Thank you so, so much. Ah, Auntie Florence, good evening. You're welcome. Yes, thank good you very evening. much. <laughs> yeah. Thank bye -bye. You. We've learned a lot. God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Alex, I see you. I see you. I see you. Christy, uh, we, I see we, you. Mm, we, we see you. All right. Okay. Thank you all so much. And uh, let's have a very wonderful. We'll see you, God willing, in October. All right. We didn't say a prayer. Thank you. All right. We didn't say a closing prayer. Maybe for those who are here, we our, can just say a prayer. Our Reverend Minister and, and host. <laughs> At their God, I say. <laughs> anyway, so all right, we can still say a prayer. Yeah. Father, we thank you. We're grateful for for seeing us through. Dear Lord God, we thank you for a successful session. We pray, dear Lord God, that Father Lord would go to practice. Your name will be glorified, will be transformed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, have a blessed week. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Ima and Susie. Good to see you. Bye bye. Hey, God bless you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.